Amateur bluegrass guitar player. I play a bluegrass guitar player on TV. I actually, I don't remember what music I played. I wonder if I still have the track they sent. Or sometimes they send it, sometimes they don't. Usually they send it. But I was on a TV show called One Big Happy that didn't last but six or eight episodes or something like that. Who was in that? Um, I remember the, the lady that was the star. She was really nice. Uh, what was her name? She came up and talked to me for a little bit. A real short little blonde girl. Um, let's see. One big happy. Oh, Alyssa, Alicia Cuthbert. Yeah, she was really nice. How many? One season. I mean, I still get... How many episodes did they actually do? Look at that. Six episodes. Like Just like I said. Which one was I uh, in? I'm not sure. Um, yeah, it's kind of a, it was it was kind of a weird premise. I didn't think I don't think it was really going to go well. But um, they called me. It was interesting because they. Um, what am I doing? Oh, here we go. Just trying to get my windows in order. Uh, you know, typically how this works is you get a call from a contractor or a casting director, um, and uh, they uh, they ask you to send a photo, a recent photo. So a lot of times what you do is you just go out and take a picture, like right then with your phone and send it to them. Uh, they want to know what you look like right then. They don't want your they don't want your headshots from eight years ago or anything like that. So they want to know what you look like, and then what they do is they print up the photos. And they throw him down on a table, and the director walks by the table and goes, him, him, her, him, her, whatever. You know, it's like, you know, eight guitar players, eight bass players, whatever. But this was just a guitar player and a bass player. Um, and we were, we were, we were playing, it was, uh, and they asked, and, but the funny thing was the contractor asked me if I knew any upright players. So I, I, I knew some guys, uh, but I was trying to think of somebody who played upright and someone they wanted someone older like me, so I, I, I asked around a little bit and I ended up getting this guy, a uh, space player named Putter Smith. You can look him up. It's funny because Putter Smith, if you are a, a James Bond fan, and <laughs> we talked about this the whole time, uh, he was in Diamonds Are Forever, uh, and uh, he was the, one of the two bad guys. There's two guys, Mr., what did they call him, Mr., uh, let's see, Mr. Kid and Mr. Something. He was Mr. Kid. And uh, so we talked about that because I knew, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you did. I know exactly who you are. I, watched that, I saw that movie 10 times. Um, and, uh, so he's playing upright and I'm playing my, uh, <laughs> uh, my, uh, Gibson dove and they wanted us to kind of be hippies. So, uh, they gave me like a vest to wear on top of the shirt I wear or something, or something like that. And they walk by, I don't know if there's a, I, I wonder if somebody's posted it. It'd be hilarious. Um, 
I mean, you just see me for a second, and we're it's called sidelining. I'm pretending to play guitar, um, and uh, so but we have what's called earwigs, little invisible, like really really small um, speakers in our ears. Happy, um, uh, what's that called? A uh, uh, farmer's market. Yeah, I don't see it. That's a pretty specific scene for someone to have posted up there. I don't know that it would have been anything anyone would. I see the trailer for One Big Happy. Five years ago, it was probably at least that long ago. Um, but like I said, I still see a couple bucks for it. I'm not sure why. Because um, in order to get secondary market money, you have to. there has to be some income generated. So... Um, uh, you know, there has to be some some, uh, some kind of, like, reuse of it. But, like, I'm not sure you would put a six-episode show up on for streaming. A sitcom that only lasts a six episodes. Um, let's see. So far, COVID is very mild cold for me. Oh, you've got COVID. Oh, from that exposure. Oh, so you actually ended up from that guy that got... That's crazy. It's super contagious. But it usually comes from like... It spread in New York so much because people were sitting next to people on the train with it and they didn't know they had it. So. Yeah, I wonder how long you've had it, Gary. Yep, you can give antibodies. And, you know, the, I just saw an article. I think there's only 24 w cases of repeat COVID worldwide, report, you know, like confirmed. So even though those antibodies may not be a lot in your bloodstream six months from now, but it may be enough to fight off any exposure to it. I'm glad you're feeling well. Swabo, did you you didn't have to go up to the nose, did you? Did they do the nose thing? Like up and then over? It's like, oh man. I had when I was a kid I got strep throat a lot. And the doctor taught me a trick. When you're getting the, the swab down the throat, he said, open your eyes really big and you won't gag, and it's totally true. Isn't that weird? So if you open your eyes really big when they're doing the throat swab, you, you shouldn't gag. It won't make you gag. Um, thanks, Bruce. Hey, Holly. Yeah, Bruce sent me a photo uh, of, of uh, some progress on the Cigar Bots guitar. Very late, Bruce. You were up very late last night. Way past your bedtime. Yeah, that's good, John. Yeah, let me know how that goes. You know, uh, I know that there are a lot of healthcare people that aren't getting it, so they don't want to get it. I forget what it was, 38% saying they're not interested in getting it, so it's interesting. Which one are you getting? You getting the Moderna or you getting the Pfizer one? Mr. Kid and Mr. Wint. Yeah, so Mr. Kid was the guy that I did that gig with. Um, hey, MM, I'm a just beginner. I'm learning with. Oh, I'm glad you're learning with me. I also recommend getting a teacher when the COVID thing ends. You know, get a little personal instruction because they can look at your technique. I can't see your hands. Uh, I can't see how your technique is. And um, I can't see how you're, you know, if you're, I can't give you specific targeted progress, a progressive plane. Oh, you went with the Moderna one. Okay, that's, actually, I, I someone told me that the Moderna one was actually um, ready a year ago, but because it was the new technology, they didn't, it took them a while to kind of get it approved or something, so I don't know. Okay, I, 
you know what I thought we'd do is I thought we'd um I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna maybe go backwards. Um let's see if I go backwards on this, we're gonna have a blank screen, I think, or something, because I deleted that. Yeah, I should delete this. Let me remove this. Okay. Um so I'm thinking we might go backwards and just kind of re-hit these scales, okay? Uh, and but but go backwards so that we're 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 kind of reworking the most most recent ones and then doing the the for earliest ones last, okay? The infected person got the first half of the vaccine about a week before. Oh, interesting. How far apart are the vaccine shots? Do you know, do you know when, when is your next one, John? We're learning here <laughs> on my YouTube channel. Well, just so you know, guitar players are last on the list for the for the vaccines, so. I'm fine. I, I think I already had it anyway. Uh, and I will get the vaccine if I if I have to get it to travel. But four weeks, wow. Wow, that's crazy. All right, well. All right, so let's let's go over these scales. Get your guitar out. 9, 16, about 14 minutes in. And we'll start uh, with the first finger on the first fret. We're going to do the G minor pentatonic, and the notes are G, B flat, uh, G, B flat, C, D, and F. Essentially a root, a flat third, a, a fourth, a fifth, and a flat seventh. If you want to analyze the notes you're playing. But anyway, we'll start on the F here. First fret. Third fret. First fret. Third fret. Open. Third fret. Open. Third fret. First fret, third fret, first fret, first, uh, third fret, and then backwards, three, one, second string, same thing, three, one, on the third string, three, zero, three, zero again, three, one, three, one, and let's end on the three because that's the G note, it gives us a nice little resolution, you want it. You don't always want to land on the one chord or the one note, the root, uh, but it does, it is a nice. Is there a charge? No. There's no charge for these. I mean, you can always donate. It's always appreciated. Uh, but yeah, no charge for these lessons. Now, if you get. Private lessons, yeah, there's definitely a charge. <laughs> but I'm not really teaching private lessons right now. Um, so let's go to the next one, the G minor sixth, or as Holly likes to call it, the G meth six. Looks like the word meth. All right, and that those notes are G, B flat, C, D, and instead of F, we have an E. Instead of F, we have E, so it sounds like this. Here's what the minor uh, pentatonic sounds like. Here's what the minor six pentatonic sounds like. It's a cool sound, and it's the BB King. Kind of the BB King happy blues lick, uh, uh, scale. Okay, we're gonna start with the open E, but the third fret is the root, and then one, three, and this one's all over the place. Zero, two. Zero three, one three, zero three, three zero, three one, three zero, two zero, three one, three zero, three, and on that G, okay. Uh, play the middle two strings, open D, second fret, open G, third fret, and go to the open G. Okay, that's part of the song here. Uh, 
Blues Grass, which was a new song that we did this week. Um, I wrote uh, this week for this week's lessons. Um, let me pull, pull up the Discord. Dennis isn't on yet, is he? I hope he's okay. Dennis has already had COVID. So is his wife and his parents. His uncle Jan passed away from it, and that's why I, well, I mean, that's not why, but I dedicated the first song to him. We actually call it Uncle Jan's Real. Uh, so I'm pulling up the Discord. Hit the like button. Sure. Or dislike. If you don't like me, you can hit the dislike. I don't care. <laughs> it doesn't reflect that badly on me. Uh, the interesting thing, though, is like buttons, just so you know, when uh, on your favorite YouTubers, if you if you like their videos, it makes it more likely that that video is going to get promoted the more likes they have, um, you know, in other. So, you know, if you want, you can go to all their videos and like all their videos. Hey, Paul, good to see you. Yeah, right. Stay mild, Gary. <laughs> so here's the here's the Discord link. <clears throat> and so you can go there and every diagram, every little JPEG uh, that I create over here. OK, these things. And then also the PDFs of these songs are all up there for free, no charge, mm. Uh, and I can, uh, I can, let's see, I'm gonna pin this for now, so it's up there at the top, so that stays there. So I'll reference the pinned link if we get asked. Um, okay, last one with the D minor pentatonic is uh, we'll start on the first fret, and then uh, third fret, and open A, and then third fret. Open D and third fret, open G and then second fret, open, or I'm sorry, uh, first fret, third fret, first fret, third fret. So backwards would be three, one, three, one. Okay. Three, thank you, Bruce. Three, uh, two, zero, three, zero, three, zero, three, one. And then maybe go hit this D note. It's kind of a cool lick. Did, um, you know, it's like you hear that a lot in blues uh, where you jump up basically that's a sixth but you don't need to worry about what interval it is there will not be a quiz on that so but everybody take a celebratory sip it's one of our drinking game rules that Gary keeps tab up tabs on also if I touch my face if I refer to myself in the third person Gary, I need to do that more, we, or that may have to come off the list, because I, I really, Tom Straley never refers to himself in the third person. <laughs> I am a name dropper. We could do that. We could we could replace it. Instead of referring to himself in the third person, we could replace it with, <laughs> drop a celebrity's name. Now, I don't know if Putter Smith qualifies as a celebrity, but he was a nice guy. I, I think he was kind of tired of talking about the whole James Bond thing, though. <laughs> but I didn't care because I knew I probably never would work with him again. So, All right. So that's those scales. We're going to go back a lesson to uh, week four. And we're, we're, uh, we're not going to do the major scale. We're just going to do the Mixolydian scale. We're just going to start on the G here, okay? Third fret, bottom string. Then zero, zero, two, three. And then again, zero, two, three on the D string. Zero two, zero one three, zero one three. Okay, and then three one zero, three one zero, two zero, three two zero, three two zero, three. a fun scale to play i like three note scale you know three notes per string scales uh to, they're just they're just fun to rip on pentatonics are fun too but but you're moving across the strings a little faster with pentatonics because you only have two notes per string okay that was last week's so the week before that we did hmm let's go back two weeks a week before that get the get the major pentatonics and then we'll add the blues note in okay uh let's go ahead open e this is the same as the E minor pentatonic. Except we're, if we start on G, 
here, third fret. Um, then it's a G major pentatonic. Same exact scale. It's just a different name because it starts on a different note. Okay? There might be a quiz on that. So <laughs> do a reverse sip. <laughs> right, Bruce? I mean, right, right, Gary? Oh, hey, Gary, do you have one of these? Hold on a second. <laughs> I'm leaving the room. Everybody take a sip. Do you have one of these, these Oxat things? Hey, John, if you're in healthcare, do you know what the, what the number is? If it gets down to you, you should be worried. So you just put it on your finger like this, and it tells you your heart rate, but it also tells you your oxygen sat rate. I think if I've got it on my finger right, I may not have it on my finger right. Yeah, there we go. So 72 beats per minute and 60 sat oxat. No, I'm just kidding. 96. 96 oxat. Oops, I don't need it to hit that button. It just shuts off on it. But see, so you can see it's cool. It was only $15 on, on Amazon or something like that. It was under 20 bucks. Here, I'll give you a link. That way, if you buy it, I can make some money. <laughs> I'm such a greedy person. I'm such a capitalist. I'm a free market capitalist. That's for ding dang sure. All right, let's see. Uh, Ox Sat Serration Monitor. I mean, there's a million of them. You, pick, you could pick any of them, I think. What is that one? I, I don't even know. There's so many of them. I'm sure they all send the numbers to China, too, so <laughs> to the Internet. It's funny. I don't see the one that I bought that, that's that one. And they all kind of jumped up in price. Why are they? Well, here. I mean, they basically just do two things. It's amazing. I don't even know how they work, to be honest. You know, it's like. I mean, here's one here. Okay, Sam, hold on a second. All right. Did my Oxat thing. Uh, so did, did John know uh, in the 90s? Yeah. Good. Thanks, John. Mine's always been in the 90s. Uh, but just so I understand why you've noted G major, but since we're in G, Dor G Dorian, this will be known as F major, since G Dorian is the first mode of F major. We're not, uh, that shouldn't be G Dorian. That was G Mixolydian, was it not? Here? You're talking about there? G mixolydian? Because we're in the context of a chord progression in the key of G. And so the, the relative major to G mixolydian is C. In other words, G mixolydian and C major scale have the exact same notes. If I play, if I play this G mixolydian scale that we just played, if I start on the, the C note, C major scale. Uh, but the reason I'm not calling it a C major scale, um, and if you want to think that, you can go, oh, hey, over G, over this G. I can think C major. True. Um, but I'm thinking in the grand grand scheme of things, the song starts on a G, it's probably going to end on a G, and every other chord is a G, and 50% of the chords are Gs. So, yeah, mixolydian is right. I'm going to do, uh, we're going to, not next week, but the week after, I think we'll do uh, G Dorian, because I think G Dorian's a great one to do, too. And then you can create a hybrid. You could create a hybrid of G Dorian, G Major, and G Mixolydian. Um, and that would be basically... You would have a B flat. It would be G major scale with a B flat and an F in it. Um, and so, uh, but that scale by itself, playing it like that, wouldn't work great. But I could see where you could go back and forth between G mixolydian and G dorian. We'll get to that. But uh, Sam, it's really more about like. 
oh, you know, like I want to hear that flat three. So I'm thinking the flat three and then I want to hear the major three and then I want to hear the four. You know, I'm thinking maybe more uh, if I'm thinking at all. <laughs> If I'm thinking at all, then I'm, I'm, uh, you know, maybe thinking about the, 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 uh, the note I'm playing, its relationship to the chord I'm playing over, which is even more complex, I think, than thinking about modes. Uh, but when you're thinking about modes, you're, you're giving yourself seven, seven notes to, to play. But when I'm thinking about a specific melody tone, it's like, why is this tone going to work so good? Oh, because it's the third of the chord or it's the, you know, the flat five of the chord or whatever. So uh, when I'm playing the John, uh, John asked me, when I'm playing the G major scale in a location other than the open position, you illustrate, would you play uh, four string, uh, like four string D, E, F sharp as a major uh, third, like three N, P, S, or would you move the F sharp to the third string? String. I don't understand. I'm sorry, John. This is where Zoom Zoom lessons would come in handy. Uh, oh, gotta lose weight. Jeez, guys. Um, hey, Sham. What's going on? Um, so as you move up, like G major, you can play a G major scale like that, or you can play the reapers like this. I don't know. If that, is that what you're thinking? Four, three notes per string. I call those three purrs. Uh, we talked about those. We did, I think, some lessons on those, but or maybe not. We didn't. The nice thing about three purrs is you got a consistent right hand, left hand relationship. But with uh, this this scale here, you've got some strings that have two notes and some strings that have three notes. Um, yeah, and so the reason I'm kind of sticking with open strings right now in open positions is to get all the all the tools that are. See, we could talk about this for. We could do a, a, a lesson. Um, we could do a lesson on this. Uh, we could keep doing these lessons for two more years. Uh, if I were to go take every one of these scales we're going to learn, and we haven't even learned them all yet, and then we start moving them up the neck. Okay, let's do them all in third position. Blah 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 blah. blah. And you definitely see bluegrass players go up the neck. What I recommend is that if you come up with a lick that you really like, that say you go something like that. Try to find it in other places up the neck, up an octave, you know, or down um, the same octave, but up the neck. Try to find a lick that you've created uh, and try to find it in other places. And that'll give you some, and if you, if you find that, then you might be able to continue to solo from that point just by seeing that those shapes are similar, okay? Um, can you play a minor chord progression? It's a basically E minor blues, I guess. I think of um, Black Magic Woman as kind of being like an E, uh, a D minor blues progression. It's kind of like a D minor blues. Uh, we never talked about that when we did blues, but so there you go. All right, um, so, okay, we're moving on. We're going to go back to, this is the second week. Let's do these scales, though. The G major, major pentatonic G. Here we go, third fret, an open A, second fret, open D, second fret, open G, second fret, open B, third fret, open uh, E, and third fret, okay? notes in that scale are G, A, B, uh, G, A, B, D, E, G, A, B, D, E. So it's a root, a second, a third, a fifth, a sixth. No seventh in there. I answered your question. Okay, good. <laughs> John, sorry. I was like, I know that makes sense to you. Because, <laughs> you know, it's like, and I, I, I don't quite know how you think yet. You and Sam both kind of are like always wanting to go deeper, dig deeper. Or have it explained from another direction, which I'm totally fine doing, because I tell you that, you know, we all learn different ways. There's like five, six, seven different ways that we all kind of figure things out. And uh, I sometimes only touch on one or two or three of them and miss a couple other ways. So, okay, what's my ox sat right now? Yeah. 
96. 98. I'm good. It's a weird tool, though. I mean, like, how does it do that? <laughs> it's not like it's pricking my finger or anything like that. Okay. It's, it's, the, it's the Tom Straley Oxsat rate channel. Oh, look, the Discord link is down there, too. I just noticed that. Okay. Uh, let's descend on the G major pentatonic. Let's play it descending. Let's not descend on it. Okay. Three, zero... Three zero two zero two zero two zero three. Uh, Aslan, you're not allowed to leave. Sorry, man. Can't do it. You got to stay on. <laughs> Just kidding. Keep it simple, Steve. I guess. Um, I, I one one thing too is like start simple and then add one thing to it and. Then, add another thing to it, get that down and add another thing. So it just, this is kind of what we're doing is kind of an additive thing. We're going, okay, we're in the key of G. Okay. But we're going to do this scale. Now we're going to add that scale and then this scale. So I'm going, we're going through a lot of scales. The idea is that maybe you can go back on some of these lessons. You've got the songs you can practice. that will really highlight the scales. I kind of wish I'd put the name of the scales. If you want to write the scale name on the top of the page, uh, like on this one, it would be the, uh, uh, G G minor pen, G minor six pentatonic and D minor pentatonic. Um, those would be the scales that we used in this song. So, uh, okay, now let's do the C major pentatonic. We're going to start with the open E on the bottom string, third fret, open, third fret, and there's our root, there's our C note. So that's the beginning of the C major pentatonic. Third fret, open D string, second fret, open, second fret, first fret, third fret, open, third okay and that takes us all the way to the top okay so we're on the we're on shoot we're on this scale right here the second one c major pentatonic how do i play so easily i'm having trouble with the first part of playing a guitar tune or tutorials but they play it sound of mine sounds different yeah that may be a situation where your guitar is not tuned and having a tuner or something like this is really handy i wish they still made these i really like these tuners um the snark ones are good though um i don't have a snark one handy Look, I haven't. I, oh, here's a tune. I dropped a tuner. I didn't drop a pick, so you can't take a sip. Tuners don't count. Oh, there it is. Um, I've got two of these. I didn't realize. I mean, I knew I had a bunch of these, but they're in cases and stuff like that. So, um, it's funny because I put them in cases and then the batteries died. So what's the point of having them in the case? <laughs> I've probably got 40 tuners in a bunch of cases that are like, <laughs> as soon as I put them on, I'm like, oh, it's dead. What was I expecting? So, um, uh, yeah. So, uh, one of the, yeah. So, if you if you were playing like if, if the teacher is saying play an E string and you play it and it doesn't sound the same, uh, there's a very good chance that you're not tuned. So you need to get tuned, and that's a that's not easy, but the tuner makes it a lot easier. If you've never played guitar or any musical instrument before, tuning for the first time is tough. Um, you know, maybe find out if you've got a neighbor that knows how to play guitar. And you, Can you tune my guitar? I, I actually kid you not. I kid you not. Whenever I would go back to Indiana to visit my mom, once a year, um, the next door neighbor, Bob Metternock, rest his soul, um, he um, uh, he always said, you got to come over and tune my banjo. <laughs> so I would go over and tune his banjo for him. And he had a five-string banjo in the corner that he never played. But it's just his way of having me come over and say hi and chit-chat for a while. So. He was a really cool guy. He built an airplane in his garage. He built a helicopter in his garage. He broke, built several cars um, in his garage. He also built, um, he, he, was a, uh, he flew um, bombers in World War II. Um, and he built a, um, in, Europe, he, in Europe, he flew bombers. Um, he also built a steamboat, really cool steamboat in his garage. That was like the last thing he built. Um, and they had a house up uh, in Wisconsin on a lake in Wisconsin, so he took the steamboat up there. Uh, but he, um, and they also had a tennis court, so I was always over there playing tennis. <laughs> they were our next door neighbors, so it was pretty nice to have a tennis court right next door. But like, pretty spoiled kid. Uh, uh, oh, you'll update the, okay. Yeah, 150, right? No, 160. 
160, less than 160, that's crazy. Okay, so uh, the D major pentatonic is kind of squirrely because it's got, if you look at the D, at the, down here at the bottom, uh, down here, this bottom one, look at the th fourth string, you've got three notes there, that red note, which is a D, by the way, the, the, the red notes are the root notes. So the top one, those three red dots in the top one are all Gs, because it's a G major pentatonic. The middle one, the middle scale, the C major pentatonic, those two red notes are Cs. And then the bottom one is a D major pentatonic scale, and those two notes are Ds. Excuse me. So, but you'll notice on that D string, you've got three notes and then one note. It's because we can't play an F sharp down here. We can't fret below the nut. So we have to play that F sharp up here. Otherwise, we would play it there, and we would have two notes per string like these other scales, okay? Which is typical for a pentatonic scale. Usually the way we play it is two notes per string, okay? Um, so the way we're gonna play this, so open, second fret, open, second fret, open, second fret, fourth fret. Sorry, Holly, pinky. And then second fret, and that's it on the, on the G string. And then open D, or open B string, third fret, open, third fret and it's the same as the uh, other two major pentatonics it's a root second third fifth and sixth that's the notes uh. and that doesn't feel very good three notes on one string one note on one this string and then two notes on the next string that's really it's really hard not to play that open G string or something right? one of those things where even I have trouble with but it's also <laughs> even I <laughs> but it's, a, it's one of those things where ah there's a weak spot right work it I really what I should do is I probably should just sit down uh, see I'm not doing it right now right intentionally right for you This whole scale, you could literally move your hand up and play it to second with the in technically second position. Hey, Richard. Uh, um, so that would be one of those things where if I'm maybe sitting in front of the TV. And try to play this like a thousand times without making a mistake. too fast start out slow and then build it up okay so that's uh so then then we the next week we did this is the third week so two weeks ago we did the same scales but we added a flat third so before we remember we had g a we had a one two three five six now we're gonna have a one two flat three three five six and this allowed us to do the the standard classic almost stereotypical almost cartoony blue, uh, bluegrass lick. Okay? That's kind of the G lick. They just call it the G lick. And it, you can do it in any key. You'll, like, hey, play the G lick in C, and you go. God. Uh, oh, oh, cool. Thank you. Yeah, this one. Uh, uh, Dash is talking about this thing. Yeah, I've got it set pretty high right now, but this the reason I'm using it now is so that... <laughs> So that I can get my guitar and my face in the in the seam. I mean, I guess I could sit further back, but I want. I'm trying to get as close as I can so you can see my frets and my fingers. Uh, but this the footrest allows me to. Uh, you see, if I didn't have the footrest, the guitar would be down here, and <laughs> that would be no good. So, so yeah. But it's also great for practicing and and you know when you practice classical wise, um, you you put it under your left foot and you get this the guitar kind of at a 45 degree angle or even I've seen guys with it almost at a 90 degree angle. Uh, guys and gals, uh, and that uh, you know, that's that makes for really good ergonomics when you're playing classical guitar music in particular. But it's also not a bad thing. I've seen there's a few guitar players, Adrian Blue, I think, or I don't know, it wasn't Adrian Blue. Oh, there's even like the Steinberger, the ne the the way the body's shaped, it kind of goes up like that naturally. So, oh. 
<laughs> I'm back. Ballerina dances back in. Aslan, I can see that now. Uh, my school gives food quick. <laughs> okay. Oh, so wait a minute. You're not you're not supposed to be taking a Zoom class right now, are you, Aslan? <laughs> You know, my wife teaches, and when she was teaching Zoom classes uh, last year, uh, they have a software that tells they, they can tell that the kids are watching YouTube or something. They're not paying attention. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Let's do the G major blues, third fret, zero, one, two. Okay, that's cool. Just that alone. Right? It kind of sounds like the entertainer. Okay, so we go three, zero, one, two, zero, three. Yeah, I, th I, I agree, Holly. That's, or did I say three? I meant two. Holly, that's very true. Open, second, third, open, third, open, third. Backwards, three, zero, three, zero. Okay. Nothing changes there. And then here's the blues. Here's the flat third. Three, two, zero. And then two, zero. Two, one, zero. Three, zero. And then go back to the three to get that G chord. Maybe hit the chord. I, the reason I like hitting the chord it kind of centers you because many of these scales that we're learning have notes that are outside of the key of G. I mean, this one's a perfect example. We're adding that B flat, so that's actually that doesn't that doesn't belong to the G chord. Um, so when you play the scale, I don't want you to necessarily think that every one of those notes is equally good over a G chord. This note is cool over the G chord, but it wants to go somewhere. Um, when we were playing the G minor pentatonic, we wanted to go down to the G. But when we're playing like the G major blues, we want to resolve up to that F sharp or that uh, B natural. So you hear that B flat man. Okay, uh, now let's see. I just, just remembered that I dreamed, I dreamed about uh, uh, my friend Sheila Gonzalez last night. It's like, it's just so funny that I had a dream about her. She plays the saxophone and keys at our church, uh, but she's not doing it right now because she doesn't want to expose herself to potential COVID because her husband's in the risk category. So uh, great couple though, good friends. and. Um, she uh, plays with Dweezil Zappa. So if you've seen Dweezil Zappa in the last year, in the last 10 years, she's the chick that plays keys and saxophone and sometimes sings and plays percussion. She's insanely talented. Probably one of the best musicians I know. Okay, sorry, I keep going to a different scale. All right, so let's do the C major scale. We're going to start with a, a C major blues. So open E, third fret, open E, or open A, third fret. Okay, that's the same as the other one. We haven't had a flat three yet. So now we're going to have here, we start here on the C, three, third fret, then open, um, open, one, two, and then open, let's see, two, okay, one, three, four, open, and then uh, three. Let's try it backwards. Three, zero, sorry. I was a little distracted there. Four, three, one, three, I mean, see, two, zero, three, uh, yeah, two, one, zero. Sorry, Holly, I see your comment. Three, zero, three, zero, three, zero, three, and on the C chord. Sounds better, C note. I finally understand the major minor relationship, G, E minor, is the same and it's magical. Yeah, G, the G minor pentatonic, the G major pentatonic is the same as the E minor pentatonic. And the E minor pentatonic we would use like over an E7 chord to create a blue sound. But we 
use the same scale over G, and we get this happy. Remember Amy from Pure Prairie League? Pre, that was pre um, Vince Gill. He wasn't in that iteration of Pure Prairie League. That was before, a little before his time. That was like early 70s. My sister had that record, and therefore I had it. When she got tired of a record, she always sold it to me. <laughs> so I should listen to that whole record. I should pull it up on Spotify. I haven't listened to that thing. Because I, when I would have a record, of course, I didn't have, I'd get a new record every three months or whatever, so I'd wear it out. So now if I listen to that record, the, the whole record, I, it brings back memories. Um, let's see, what else? Oh yeah, that one scale, the, yeah, the, the, yeah. We can't do it on this one though. So Holly, we won't be able to move the scale up a fret or the hand up a fret. Um, uh, but you could, I mean, I te technically you could do it like this. The low D, the low E, sorry, zero, one, two. So we're doing the bottom scale now, this one down here, okay? Zero, one, two, okay? So you can do your first finger on that. And then your golden here, zero, two, zero, two, three, four, uh, oh yeah, this one I've got two options here. Uh, we yeah, so let's just play this A note. Don't worry about the B note here and B note open string. We really want to get as many open strings as we can. Then second finger on the D note, open E, first fret, second fret. You can do that with your first finger. You can even practice it. Practice that. So these are these are major blues scales. So we're taking a major pentatonic and adding a flat third to it. So instead of having root, second, third, fifth, sixth, we have a root, second, flat third, third, fifth, and sixth. And this is, like I said, this is the root scale for the, the classic, what's called in, in bluegrass music, it's called the G lick. Okay, you need this scale to play that lick. So the, uh, the week before, now we're just doing a review of the last five weeks. Um, the week before, this is what we learned, the, the G major pentatonic. If you, so if you look at it up here, um, you can see the, the notes, the, each one of those are pentatonic scales. There are only five notes in each of these scales, G, A, B, C, uh, D, E, C, D, E, G, A, and D, E, F sharp, A, B. And they're over here, <laughs> over here. And then uh, I added... Oops, sorry. I added the flat third in each one of those, and this is what those look like. Uh, the D major one, it's not one I use very, I mean, I really, I mean, I don't, I don't do that at all. That over D, I mean, hey, well, you know, that's not true because it's a great little lead into the G chord, right? If I were a bass player, I might go, right? One, two. So if I've got four quarter notes, the hum's going by really fast, and I'm playing bass, and I'm playing over a D chord. Uh, that's a nice, that, that's a great lead in to the G chord. See that? Um, so I might use that. Um, I'm more likely to use that part of the scale. Um, or even this, right? Kind of visualizing over the D chord. But I'm definitely gonna, I would use this, these, some of these notes if I were playing higher up. So if I'm thinking G up here, because this is a G chord here. chocolate last night and I ate it knowing oh I'm gonna get up in the middle of the night and I got up at 2 30 I've been up since then <laughs> so, so, uh.
no entiendo inglés. Uh, you don't speak English. Now, I don't, I don't speak entiendo, entiendo. I'm assuming that's Spanish. It sounds like Spanish. I speak very un poquito <laughs> español. Uh, sorry. But there's a lot of guitar teachers out there that teach in Spanish. So you should not have a problem finding one. There's probably 10,000 on YouTube alone. Um, and uh, I don't get a lot of, of, of viewers from Spain or Mexico. I just uh, just worked on a, yesterday, in fact, I worked on the new Marco Antonio record, and Mar Marco Antonio Solis record. Um, I worked on it last year, and I had one more, they asked me to do one more thing for it, so. All right, so those are the D major blues. The only one we have left is the first one we did, which is the G major. And there's two there's two scales here only because you could finger it a couple different ways but we're just going to do it in the, m m with as many open strings as possible so we're going to do it in the top the top one okay um so in start on the g let's just start on g now let's not worry about the, all the possible notes uh but let's start on g third fret and open second third open second fourth open second open first third open second third okay and backwards three two zero three one zero two zero uh four four two zero um three two zero gary i think that's very smart i hate putting i a great scale just to practice uh, the drag about this scale though is that it's not movable it's just a G major scale we if I move it up a fret <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's hard to do but you want to sound intentionally bad it's like when I do Casey Joe memory right. he's saying he doesn't understand yeah I figured that's what he's saying no entiendo entiendo I, that's the the verb I did I wasn't recognizing no comprende I would I, no comprendo English, I would understand. I, yo no comprendo español. So. But entiendo, entiendo. I learned a new word. Entiendo would be understand, I guess. Uh, comprende would be comprehend. Same kind of, almost the exact same. Yeah, uh, now you got... Uh, 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 <laughs> sorry, I'm so, Al, I'm just calling you Al. Sorry, that's, you're getting Al. I'm sorry if that's offensive. I just can't, I'm not, uh, it's hard to, it's hard to read those little letters. And it's also, but I can tell you right now how many, um, if I go to analytics, I can see audience and then I can click on where my, see my, my view counts going down. It's starting to go back into normal range. So the, 
Um, the uh, top geographies, 46% the United States. No surprise there, okay? Uh, number two is Britain. No, no surprise there. Canada, Australia. Okay, so all English speaking for the most part. Germany, the next. Netherlands, next. That's no surprise. And India, then France, Philippines, Italy, Ireland, Sweden, Belgium, Spain is way down there. See, Spain is above Mexico, which is kind of surprising. Mexico's way down there. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I had toyed with, because you can pay people to translate your videos. So, like, some of my more popular videos, you can have people, like, um, just pay them. It's not even that much, I don't think. Sometimes it can be as little as five bucks to have someone translate your video. I don't know if they would do it right, though. That's the, <laughs> it's like, hopefully it's right. Um, but, ah, I gotta, I can't be on this. Um, so let's see. All right. So um, let me do a little bit of this. Let me go ahead and play the jam track. Oh, let me give you the jam track. Hey, Pepper. Good to see you. Uh, oh, yeah. Did, was that text? I, I didn't even check on Facebook. <laughs> I got a weird message from you on Facebook. Was that for me? You said something about sending money. Are you, am I getting mail? Let me see if you replied to that. You probably did. Oh, this, this is probably you here. Yeah, no, your fridge, you got to deal with the fridge. My bill was sent. To, oh, I see what you're asking. Okay. Yes. The TikTok is business ideas. Oh, the man looks like he's doing a great job. My, my bill was sent to California on 21st. Still has not been processed. Okay, I didn't see that. What was the TikTok thing? Sorry, I'm not a big TikTok person, so. No, I'm getting mail. Yeah, so you're asking, is California not getting mail? Like, is it canceled because of... I sent my payment to my credit card 17 days ago and still have not been processed. Interesting. No, we have not had a, a, a delay on paper mail in California. Not that I know of. Um, so I see, I see the mailman every day. So... Okay, so I'm going to uh, just scroll through some of these scales, and I'm going to just put the jam track on. Oh, I need to give you the jam track. Here's that. If you don't have it, um, I am going to put it here. I, I may pin it, but maybe not. But here's what I'm going to be jamming to. Okay. And then um, feel free to join me. I'll turn this up pretty loud, I think, so we can – I don't know if you can hear it very well. Or if it may, if it's too loud, it just gets distorted. But go back to the beginning here. Beat uh, 100 beats per minute. And G. One, two, three, four. That's that one. Okay, let's go to. So now I'm going to change um, scales. Not sure why they didn't. Probably the word pop off <laughs> is why they didn't approve it. Okay, so uh, I'm going to change scale for the chords. So G chord, I'm going to play G major and so on. All right. 
And now I'm going to add the flat third to those scales, and it's going to be the... I can do the, the G lick. Everybody take a sip. Anyway, you get the idea, um, and it, you can see where a I'm having I'm struggling because I'm trying to stick to the one scales, just those the scales that I'm demonstrating, and not going to any of the others. And it's like trying to fix a car with one tool, um, and so I'm struggling with it. Um, but if I if I have no restrictions, then I can do all of the scales, and then I got much more, uh, many more melodic ideas that I can do. Okay, now I'm going to do the bottom scale here, this one down here. G mix a living. That one is uh, you got the flat third. Okay, now here are the minor pentatonic. Yesterday was Bruce's birthday. What? I did not know this. That's why we're staying up all night. Because <laughs> he wanted it to last as long as possible. Okay. All right, you guys ready? Let's sing happy birthday to Bruce. I don't care if I get a copyright strike on this one. See? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Bruce. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> hey, Gary, I always want to do a worship song where I, I, I keep ending with the false endings, where like the song never ends, like you got every false ending in the book and never end the song. <laughs> so Bruce is, uh, I think he's 42 yesterday. He was 42 years old yesterday. Thank you, Bob. God bless you. I appreciate that. And you were lurking. Money from a lurker. <laughs> so I'm going to pull my shirt out so I look thinner. Get a little... <laughs> oh... <coughs> 74 holy cow well that's awesome uh so i'm 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 about yeah bruce at 30 29 again i i you know i i I'm, i never quite understand i mean I, you know i still feel 18 i mean i i don't feel 18 i don't remember what 18 feels like 18 has been so long ago you know 
I don't know if I would even say, I still feel like 48, you know? I don't remember what 48 feels like. I feel like what I feel like right now, and that's, I feel fine. Thank God. <laughs> Gary's, uh, Gary's code, code lingo there was had to be approved. So everybody say happy birthday. I think it's, oh, oh, well, no, that's, no, yesterday was Bruce's birthday, right? Is that what you said, Holly? I mean, uh, Pepper? Uh, let's see. Boom, 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 boom. Yesterday. Yeah, it was Bruce's birthday. So who, who's... That's all right, Azan. That happens all the time. Um, uh, yeah, Elvis Presley was today, but let's look at yes, let's, who's yesterday's. was yesterday was that the seventh yeah you're probably gonna beat me to it uh, all right so who do we have here a bunch of teenagers I don't know it's so funny this is some kind of like kids thing Nicholas Cage uh, Jeremy Renner Lamar Jackson football player uh, let's see. A lot of people I don't know. Making me feel really old. Uh, Juan, Juan Gabriel. I didn't know he died. That's weird. Ella Black. Actually, no Ella, Ella Black. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> A lot of YouTube stars and reality stars. <laughs> Something like... Uh, A lot of people I don't know. I, I want to know more in history. This is too. This is like too. Kids pop on this day. Here we go. A lot of stuff happened on this day. What happened in the last century? Yeah, too many things to actually even know. Kenny Loggins was yesterday. Oh, that's cool. My guitar tech is his guitar tech. The guy that does my guitar repairs will sometimes tour with him and be his guitar tech. So, Let's see. What did Holly say that got hooked laughing? Oh. <laughs> Successful squirrel deployment. Well played. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Well, yeah, so this was it. And now we're, uh, see, we're to the, this, we're up, we're caught up now. So, and I could have played all these songs, too, over there. I could try to do that. I don't think. What would happen if I laid them out here and tried to play them all one right after the other? I think at 100, I might be able to do that. Good for my reading chops. So let's see. Blues Grass is the last one. Uncle Jan's Re Uncle Jan's Reel is the first one. Uh, Penta Up was the second one. Inigo Montoya was the third. And Flipping Off the Parents was the fourth. So I got them all laid out here. Let's see if I can do this. I'm going to try to play using the jam track that I posted. And I'll post again right here. <laughs> since I got distracted and yet my view count goes up while I'm sitting here looking what happened on January 7th <laughs> it's like and I didn't see anything interesting enough to be like oh okay that's cool and I was like yeah it was literally thousands of things <laughs> every year had something I'm like <laughs> from 1300s I'm like yeah I'm not gonna read through this all right let's see if I can do this oh I gotta I can barely see that one two three
everyone. Up. I forgot about the There it is. Mess up on that. All right. Woo! That's hard work. It's all over the place. Uh, let's see, Louisiana. Tom, have you have you heard of the Gibson? Of course, the Gibson Ripper bass. Yeah, I played one years ago. Um, Me try getting an ESP fretless bass. I don't. I've already got a fretless bass. I don't need another one. I only need one fretless bass. <laughs> of course, I only thought I needed one bass. I got five basses. I only thought I needed one ukulele. I have six ukuleles. Almost ended up with two ouds. <laughs> when I went oud shopping, that oud wasn't that much better than the oud I already had. So, um. Anyway, so let's see what else is going on. I. Uh, yeah, we could, yeah, the, yeah, well, yeah, I think I'm going to do some, some licks and some open string high up the fret things. We'll see what happens, but yeah. Um, and just so you know, anytime you have that flat three, so that would be the B flat in G. You can bend that, but I mean, I'm not going to be doing pedal steel licks on the, uh, on this guitar. I could do pedal steel licks on the electric I'm changing guitars so we can take a sip uh, you know like a G you know like yeah so this thing's out of tune um, let's see what else is going on so next week, we're going to do what now? We're going to add the blues notes to this. And those we could also, we could bend to the blues note. We should go from the four to the flat five, which we're going to get to. So, uh, new viewers, Tom does a live lesson every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 a.m. Los Angeles time. He also has a Discord channel. Yeah. Join the Discord, um, and you can see all of these songs that I just played. I just played five songs that I wrote the last five weeks for the for the series each one of the songs kind of highlighting the scale that we're working on that week um, and there's tab and it's tab and music notation so if you if you can't read music it's fine the tabs there um, but the music notation is great to refer to um, I'm getting cold the music notation is great to refer to for the rhythm okay 
So if you're um, like not sure what the rhythm is, you can look at the music notation and that will sometimes help you. Uh, that's why I like music notation better than tab because you, you, you tab generally doesn't include the rhythm. You can include the rhythm on it. It does come that way sometimes, but um, tab does tell you where to play it. But I did not rewrite. I was not happy with it. You're right. Uh, bar 11. What was that? Uh, a blue, yeah, blues breast. Was it bar 11? <laughs> yes, because sitting on the C note. Yeah, uh, yeah, I could, I could go. Yeah, because originally it was written. Um, and I messed up right there. It's just because it's not musically, it doesn't make a lot of sense to sit on the C note over this G chord. I should have done that. So. I can re I can do that. I could rewrite that and, and post it as a like an alt. Um, next week's is going to probably be called something like even more blues grass because <laughs> we're going to have that we're going to have the flat five in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these scales up here, at least the first two, the G minor and the D minor, and we're going to add the flat four uh, flat five to those. So it's going to be a G minor with a D flat in it, and it's going to be a D minor with an A flat in it, which is also a G sharp, which is like and though it shouldn't work, it totally works. Um, so, um, sorry, I gotta catch up on some, I'm getting some. All right, that's good. Uh, oh shoot. I'm getting. <laughs> oh, I dropped a pick, everybody take a sip. I dropped my Wigan one. My Wigan Gypsy Jazz pick, okay. Uh, let's see. Oops. Uh, let's see. Okay, that's not important. And I had another thing I had to deal with here. Sorry. Um... So yeah, the, so the bends, like, um, the bends thing, uh, like I think of bends more like country. Do I have my telly? Yeah, my telly's up there. Um, uh, and bluegrass. I mean, they do bend, but they don't bend a lot because usually bluegrass players, in fact, I'm going to put mediums on this. I'm going to order some today, I think. Um, and uh, I'm going to put, um, uh, oh, yeah, Aslan's getting getting to the hang of it, this whole sip thing. <laughs> the... Um, uh, so I, I think of like the bend stuff um, is more in the realm of country. You know, we could do a series on bending, um, how to bend guitar, the electric guitar. Cause pretty much everyone here is has electric and acoustic, I would say. Um, but on acoustic, the bluegrass players tend to play with pretty heavy strings and uh Bending is not like a big thing for them, and you and you. It's hard to bend down here because you're you're fighting the nut. The closer you get to the twelfth fret, the easier it is to bend because you have the least resistance at the twelfth fret, and then from there up, it gets more and more resistance the closer you get to the bridge. Um, <laughs> Aslan doesn't know what he's doing, uh, but yep, yeah, you can bend on a bass. Um, when you have a fretless, you don't need to. You just slide. It sounds like a bend. I played slide on bass. Um, so let's see. Uh, yeah, and if you join the Discord, uh, try to use your YouTube name if you can. Let me see. I have to open up a... Uh, let's see, what can I do here? Just trying to find 
Ooh, I could open this and add a tele, a, a kind of track to this. Let me try that. My Montgomery cable died yesterday. It just like makes no sense that it died. It just died um, in my studio. So I had to let me pull up another one. Let's see if this is right. Okay. Uh, now I don't know what sound I'm going to use. Let me just start here and see what I come up with. Now I'll tell you something about with with the country bending thing. Um, I don't want to go over too many people's heads, yeah, but um, this guitar, the neck needs an adjustment, but. Tune. Um, yeah, let me pull up a different sound. I think I'll go with a different, different vibe here. Let me uh, pull up an amp. I'm going to pull up Native Instruments Guitar Rig, um, and they've got a bunch of presets. I just go. I can go to Style, Styles, hit Country, and then click on one of these, and probably uh, Country Twang Driven. Let's see what that sounds like. Huh. Oh, it's got a lot of compression on it. Um, and this guitar, right now the neck, the, the neck's a little jacked up, so it's it's a little too the action's a little too low, really hard to bend on. And for a while, I put nines on this guitar to get an even thinner kind of twangier sound, but. Now I've got tens on it, so it's a little harder to bend. Nines are a little easier to bend than tens. I mean, there. Steve Ray Vaughan would play with thirteens, but he also tuned down a half step, so it would make everything looser. Um, let's see. What am I looking for? This. Okay. <laughs> things you can do with uh, with bending. This guitar hasn't been played in a while, so it's going to take a sec to get to. And um, things with with playing um, like pedal steel licks in particular but like bends um, on electric guitar and it's like in the country context the caged method really is big and even not even so much the full cage method if you can just start out by learning triad shapes uh, major triad shapes on the on the top three strings and there's only three shapes really there's this shape which is the top of this bar chord right and the next shape is this shape, which looks like a D chord, right? Or, or a C chord. So it's a D shape or a C shape in the whole context of the, um, sorry, my uh, brain shot off, in the context of cage method. And then the last one is this shape, which is actually the root inversion. There's the root on the bottom, okay? And it looks like an A chord, okay? So, those three shapes of like learn, learn them in all the 
chords, uh, so if you want to do C, you have okay, and that's your that's your starting place when you're doing these pedal steel licks. Now, like I said, further down here it's harder, but the further up here you are, like if I'm playing this, if I'm visualizing this G shape, I've got the root, the third, and the fifth, so I can take the second and bend up to the third and hit the fifth at the same time. Okay, and the other thing when you're doing that, when you go like that, I'm trying to create this little little triad here. When I come down, I'm actually playing a, the top part of a D triad. So one thing you can do is over D. I'm basically doing like a, so when, when you learn the notes that you're playing, like this is the third, this is the, this is the uh, fifth, and this is the root. So I know how I five six suspension would be. Um, so that's um, basically what I'm doing there. Is I'm playing. I'm, I'm visualizing this G shape here. This one up an octave. I'm taking the fifth, I'm going up to the sixth, hitting the root, back down to the fifth, and then I'm going down below the third, and bending up to the third, and then down to the root. So it's all about kind of bending around every one of these shapes. You can, you can do this. Uh, start to reveal themselves as you start to see the shapes and you go, well, how can I get this? One of my favorite licks to do is I like to do on the middle, uh, on the second, third, and fourth string. So then you start to see chord shapes there. So if I'm playing over, say, well, I can go back to the G chord. With the G chord, I can go... Again, those are just G major triads. This is root third fifth. Well, I want I can go below the third and get the second and hammer it on to the third. Not none of them are very easy. But I like this sound. you kind of discover some pedal steel licks pedal steel players what they're doing is they're hitting a triad and then they're manipulating those notes with the pedals so a pedal may loosen a string and make it go down something like that you could go uh, like that you know or you could have a pedal and make it go you hit this and the pedal will make the string go up and there's B-benders on, you have tellies that can have a B-bender and a G-bender. So you can actually, if you push the strap down, it bends the B string. And if you push the strap back, it push, bends the, the G string. So you can get all sorts of crazy, you know, things. I, I actually played one once and I, I, w I was taking it off and I, it, it's the, the springs. It's all, they, cu they basically cut all of this out and it's got springs and levers and everything. It's very complex. Um, and uh, I, I took it, I was taking it off and I accidentally pulled the, when I was taking the strap off, I had my hand here and it, the spring just closed down the, the, 
thing onto my finger. It was like I had a, a, one of those blood blisters right there for weeks. It was awful. Oh, man, it hurt so bad. But it really pinched the tickets out of me. So, but, yeah, so, you, you know, if you want to start on electric, you want to start doing some of those pedal steel licks. Um, Seventh licks. Tom, every time you hit a wrong note, you have to tune the low G string. I don't have a low G string. I have a low E string. I hit a lot of wrong notes, so I doubt that's the case. Otherwise, I'd be doing nothing but tuning. I'm not trying to blame the guitar, though, for my wrong notes, so if that's what you're saying. See, that's just fretting out. I think this needs a new nut. I think it's just a little too... It's, it's actually touching, I think, the first fret. Maybe, is it under the tree? It's under the tree, so that's not... That's one too that's kind of cool. Like this, you know, this shape, the E chord, right? All right. So if I play E up here, it's an A chord. There's B. And then the top note there is the third of the chord. I got like here, I go all the way up here, up to the 14th fret, 13th and 14th fret. Um, I've got. below the third and get the second I can pull down towards the floor and I can bend that F sharp to the uh, to the G sharp so I make this kind of an, an E2 chord to an E major chord uh, pedal essentially means the same note thus playing the same chord in varying shapes of verses. basically yeah, pedal steel players, like I said, they got a bar. Remember we talked about slide, and I like playing slide and standard tuning, but it just means you have to find a lot of... You have to find... You have to try to find some shapes, and they're very difficult to find any major, you know, shape tonalities uh, in standard tuning. It's a lot easier if you tune it in open tuning. You just lay the bar across, and that's what, you know, pedal steels are in open tunings. And so they've got a bar, and they're playing it on top like this, you know, like on like this. And then they're playing pedals. And it's crazy because I've seen eight or more pedals on the floor. They also have four, can have up to four knee levers. So you can take your right knee to the right, right knee to the left, left knee to the left, right knee to the left. And you could be pushing two different knee levers, and you could hit two pedals with each foot, you, you can change so many things. You really have to know your, you, you know, pedal steel is generally, there's probably standard programmings of it, but it's very mechanical and everybody has their own, you know, tuning for it. And a lot of times, you know, where they go, oh, okay, this pedal is going to make this string go up a whole step, but the pedal next to it's going to make the other string next to it go up a half step. So I can do, I can do this, um, I can go from this, so basically, it's called a double stop uh, bend, a double stop bend. But I'm playing, it's hard to do, but you can get it once you work on it. But it's, I'm playing like, I can do here G, since we're, we've been talking about G's. Uh, G and B here, just like the open string. And what I'm doing is I'm bending, I'm bending one note a whole step. So I'm bending the G up to the A. And the nice thing about tellies is there's no whammy bar. So you're not, that's part of the reason why Country players will use tellies because they can bend without worrying about having to compensate for the the that the other strings are going to go flat uh, because they're bending, putting tension on specific strings. Um, and so when I bend this one up, I'm bending this one up with my pinky, but I'm only going up one fret. So I'm actually going up two frets with one string and one fret with the other.
Yeah, it is pretty dirty. <laughs> Brother Tom, six year old brother, is that right? Six year old? I think I remembered that. <laughs> I'm the happy guitar player, right? Uh, let's see. No, yeah, the theoretical term pedal points a different thing. Yeah, pedal is actually a pedal. <laughs> yeah, pedal steel. It's 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 bending the strings. Um, Alex has a one that has three pedals or four pedals. It's really technically not a pedal steel. The idea for his his that he bought, he he has it set up so he can use it like a pedal steel. The idea is that um, I think that you hit the pedal and it changes the tuning. So you can have a guitar that this, it's like a lap steel, but it can be open D. You hit a pedal and you can change it up to open D or open E. You hit another pedal, it can change everything to open G. Something like that. Um, I think that was the design. Uh, it's pretty old. Um, yeah, I know. It's it's filthy. Yep. Yeah, it's dirt. Sometimes it's not dirt. Sometimes it's just worn away wood. But this is definitely... <laughs> finger sweat. Finger, finger grime. <laughs> yeah, so the... So if you... Finding the triad shapes on the neck, we could talk about that. Find all the G triad shapes, and from those you can kind of create lots of... the shapes connect like so what I would suggest is like find all the G triads and then find G ghost GC again I'm out of tune I think it, the, the intonation of the fret is the, the neck is out this is, this is Alex's favorite guitar um Then you can start to see what what can I do to a G chord to make it a C chord because that's what pedal steel players will do. They'll play a G chord, but instead of going sliding up to C chord, because um, they say they they put the bar down and it sounds like this. Instead of sliding up to C or like that, they'll just hit two pedals and one pedal will take this string up a fret and this string up a whole step, half step here and whole step here. Left, right, left, right, you know. Um, I don't know if I could do it. I can't really get it. So, anyway. 
My IRL guitar teacher has been after me to learn all the major triad checks. Yeah, it does kind of, it's kind of like learning the cage method a little bit. Um, Cause the cage method basically does bigger chord shapes, I think than the triads, but um, triads are kind of an easier place to start. And some of them look familiar like this one here. It's like a D chord. So it's, it's like, oh, okay, I see that's okay. That makes sense. That, that's G. D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G. So I, yeah, I might, you know, when I'm soloing a lot of times, like I've said before, I'm seeing, you know, the, the cage shapes or I have. I think we didn't we start with the cage method like 160 lessons ago, Bruce. <laughs> it's like what? So yeah, I got to work on this thing. I should, I should. Uh, yeah, I, I did take the neck off because you, the problem is you can't adjust the truss rod here. You actually have to adjust it here, so you have to take the neck off to adjust the truss rod. And I did adjustment to it, but it didn't really fix it. It's still a little flat. It's not bad. I just it needs to be intonated and. and Action and maybe raised a little bit. Um, but I'm going to hang this back up. And then Monday, we're going to, um, Monday, we're going to uh, do add the blues notes to this, these scales, okay? So, oh, yeah, yeah, you've heard, yeah, that's right, yeah, the top strings definitely. If you're, um, if you're playing um, with a, like a big band, yeah, you know, like the, the guitar is already kind of a low instrument. So if you're playing, everybody get to take a sip again because I'm changing guitars. Um, but also I find like in, in the worship context or just in a, in a record context, like a lot of times if you create some kind of um, high guitar part, you know, based around triads potentially, um, you can, um, let's see, uh, let me find something here. Maybe this sounds uh, right. Mm -hmm. cuts through really nice on a record and in a live context so being able to you know play some high high know your triads high up down the neck really gives you a lot of tools thanks hook jay i appreciate that man so let me get this uh dang it i'm sorry i'm getting my windows in order <laughs> Mixed up. There we go. The 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 uh, the i the um, the avatar for OBS, which is the video software, looks a lot like the avatar for Logic, and so I'm running Logic, and I keep going to Logic, and I want to see the OBS software. So. Suddenly have some crazy. Wait. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that looks like Russian. Um.
squirreling myself now <laughs> I don't need I don't need I don't need pepper or holly to squirrel me so I'm going to I, I've got a I've got to I'm having lunch <laughs> wow whatever <laughs> I haven't been drunk for the day <laughs> I've got my St. Arbucks right here and uh trying to wake up. I didn't get any sleep last night, so I'm kind of like, I'm on Starbucks high right now. And I got to go get some food because um, I haven't eaten yet. So Glenn Fittich, yeah. Yeah, I've got some Kentucky Owl here, but that's not, that's not, uh, that's not, um, that's not vodka though. Glenn Fittich isn't either. Glenn Fittich is, uh, Glenn Fittich is bourbon, right? Or is that Irish whiskey? No, Glenn Fittich has got to be Irish whiskey. Chimney sweep. Translucent chimney sweep. Oh. Hey, chimney sweep. I'm impressed that you can speak English and Russian. <laughs> it's very impressive. Those are very different languages. Try to keep it to English if you can, though. Uh, I can translate, I suppose, <laughs> but that slows me down. To, to highlight your, and go to Google Translate and go, what did you say? Uh, I'm assuming that's what you did, Dennis. Is that the first one right there? There was a, was there a longer one? Oh, looks like Bul Bulgarian. Is it Bulgarian or Russian? Okay, hello everyone, just connected. What's going on here? What does it say? Russian, detected Russian, okay. <laughs> and I don't blame you. I, you probably just typed it normal like you would normally type and didn't think, didn't think about it. But yeah, I'm here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, generally at 9 a.m. I was a little late today because when I turned on OBS, this, the video part of the, my screen was black, which tells me that for some reason it wasn't sending a signal to that. So I, I just rebooted. Doesn't take long. Uh, single malt scotch. That's right. Single malt scotch. Uh, Glen, I've had Glen Fittish before, uh, but my uh, yeah. I mean, I don't. I'm not really a drinker. I had a I had a Corona last night. I'll probably have a Corona tonight with with sushi. I'm, with, Friday is sushi night, so we usually. I don't really drink very much. I didn't start drinking until I was in my fifties, and even then, it's just like I'll have a beer every now and then. But. Um, uh, Tom, post Discord one more, once more. Oh, it's at the top. I pinned it, but I will post it again. Can you not see the pin? Copy. I think this is it right here. There's the Discord. Oh, you're from Moscow. Well, welcome. It's probably a little cold there right now. I almost, I got asked to go, I've told this story before, I got asked to go to St. Petersburg to play guitar for Paul Anka to play for Vladimir Putin's 50th birthday. <laughs> yeah, that 
would have been just literally to go there and I think play one song. His favorite song is My Way, the Frank Sinatra song, I Did It My Way. Um, but Paul Anka wrote that song. So um, uh, so the, the whole the thing was to fly to St. Petersburg to play one song and then go home. <laughs> and my friend whose gig it was, it wasn't my gig, uh, uh, my friend Joe DeBlossi, whose gig it was, didn't want to do it. He's like, I don't want to do, you know, I mean, I don't want to leave town for that. To, you know, I'll be exhausted. It's too much work. And so he um, he said uh, um, the um, uh, he he suggested me, and then Paul Anka was mad that Joe didn't want to do it, so he didn't want to use his sub. So because I, I said I'll do it, sure. What the heck? It sounded like fun. So um, ah, well, dang. Can you understand what I'm saying though? If you're having to, well, typing English is different than typing Russian. I get that. So. Yeah, totally use, you can use, totally use Google Translate. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'll be back Monday. Um, we're going to talk more about the acoustic stuff. We'll get a new scale. We're going to add blues notes to this, and then we'll, I'll write a new song next week uh, that will kind of highlight those new notes, okay? What is my favorite guitar solo? Uh, soloist, the guitar player, or actually uh, my favorite guitar solo? Uh, that's hard to say. That's a big. That's a big question. Uh, dang, I yeah. Solos that, I mean, one you can look up is really good that you probably have never heard is uh, Larry Carlton's solo on. Kid Charlemagne by Steely Dan. I'll post a link. Uh, let's see. We'll find it. Um, he does a solo in the middle and a solo at the end, and it's just every note is perfect. Not a note out of place. Uh, but to find one solo, that I'm assuming that's the question. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Okay, see you later. See you later. Uh, what was his name again? What did you say? Chimney Sweep. Okay. Um, let's see. Let me go to YouTube. There may be tutorials on how to play it, too. No, here it is. I don't want it to play. So here's the link for it. All right, so that you can check that out there. Yeah, okay. So yeah, that's one of my favorites. So I don't really have one favorite. I did a. Um, let me see if I can find it. I did a long time ago on my. Do I have it here? I think it's on my. So far, I have a link on my blogger page. Uh, let's see. Let me search posts and solos. Ten solos. Okay, so now I don't know if these links work, but you can look them up. The, this is a, quite. A, this is a really old post. Let's see. Can I? Okay, here it is. Here. Well, from a, it's a, almost ten years ago, I posted this. Um, and I may have actually this. This was copy and pasted from my. AOL thing from probably the 90s. Uh, but I listed 10 solos here that basically made me want to quit playing guitar <laughs> in no particular order. Elegant Gypsy, uh, uh, the uh, Aldi Miola from the race, uh, Weekend in LA, uh, Ode to Cuda by George Benson, um, Imperial Strut by Robin Ford on Yellow Jackets, All, a lot of jazz stuff. Uh, Kid Charlie Mange, Strawberry Letter 23 by... Uh, that's actually Lee Rittenauer. All these are, almost all of these are L.A., you know, uh, Talk to You Later, which is Lukather. Um, uh, Joe Passes Night and Day, such a great song. Albert Lee doing um, country, you know, here's a good country. Um, uh, oh, my gosh, I can show you something. This is, I'll show you. 
You're still there. Is everybody still there, Bruce? Um, Albert Lee, country boy. He does a thing with... Um, and, and somebody else covered this song, but he actually wrote this. Um, oh, it's funny, somebody did a lesson. Well, that makes sense. Uh, Is this the recording? Yeah. So this is the recording of it. But he does this thing with a dotted eighth. Um, a lot of Rosie by ACDC. That's a great solo too. Yeah. All of those ACDC solos are pretty great. Um, cause they're actually approachable. All the ones that I'm posting on that, <laughs> on that blog thing is like unapproachable. Uh, but Albert Lee did this thing and I, I don't have, um, my telly up right now, but I can do it on this. Let's see. Okay. Where's the, okay. We need rid of that delay. Okay, so um, I'm going to add a couple things here. I'm going to add a little reverb. That's a lot of reverb. Uh, let's see, a room, small old wooden room. Okay, and then I'm going to add a delay. And so what I'm doing is I'm going to put a delay at about 50-50. So it's 50% clean. Oh, I'll just use tape delay. And I'm going to go dotted eighth. Eighth dotted. And I'm going to go with one repeat. Okay, so here, I'm going to get rid of those uh, feedback. No feedback. See that? Actually, I think I need to make the... Okay, do you see what I'm doing? So I'm hitting the strings. Let me get my windows in order here. Um, what's the tempo? So the, it's not very good timing right now, but, um, The, the delay is doing half of the notes. Okay, I'm going to change the tempo to like 160. I'll turn off the delay, and here's what I'm actually playing. Okay, but the delay is going... It's, it's echoing that first note. A dotted eighth after I hit it at the tempo I set it at. So it goes. I can almost play it without the delay, but. <laughs> you get the idea, though. <laughs> kind of fun though, huh? Yeah, that. Yeah, I don't. I have that delay on right now. I got to turn it off. Uh, yeah, the the. Uh... What's it? It's a great song. Uh, Ran was it Ricky Skaggs that covered it? Somebody did a cover of it that made it a hit. It wasn't a hit on, uh, but one of my guitar teachers hit me to him, and then I bought his record, and that was the record on it, so, or that was the main, that was the you know the title cut. So <laughs> everybody's listening to the uh, uh, Albert Lee. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, Edge uses it too. He uses it kind of in a different way. I don't think he he kind of he do, I mean he does it slower. He also doesn't mix it at fifty fifty. I don't think. I mean he kind of does. Uh, I I get I get trouble here if I you know. Uh, but basically, and I'd want a probably a bigger reverb. So I'd go with more like a hall. Yeah, and he does use feedback. So he's kind of like. So I don't want to, I, I could get in trouble for that. We'll see what happens if I get a copyright infringement on that. But uh, yeah, so he's using the dotted eighth as well. Uh, and it's a slower tempo. That was a hundred beats per minute. So, yeah, it was Skaggs that did the cover. Okay. Oh, is that what he does? Okay. Yeah, I mean, the, I, the, it's the scratchy pick that really I should have picked that up for that. But okay, I got to get going. I've got some things going on today, and I need to hit it. But I will, um, I will talk to. You. I'll see you on Monday. And thank you for the. Uh, thank you for the monetary love there. Uh, Hook, appreciate it a lot. And also, shoot, where are you? I know I saw it. There it is. And Bob, Bob Abbott, who kind of lurked today. He was there, but he didn't really comment much, or if at all. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of stuff. I, I'm sorry if I missed anything, but, you know, Holly, Bruce, uh, you're all pretty good at, and Dennis, you're all really good at making me catch these things. So, uh, and did we ever see Dennis? I hope Dennis is okay. Uh, maybe check up on Dennis. I don't see him here. So um, hopefully he's just busy working or something, but it's good that we have Holly here as a, a moderator as well. Um, uh, yeah, we no, I don't see Dennis anywhere in the chat. So, so you guys are probably talking about that and I just missed it. So have a great day. God bless you all. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for the uh, tips. I appreciate that. And then next week we're going to add a note, uh, to each of these. Well, Sorry, <laughs> uh, we're gonna add a note to let me let me experiment with the G minor six. We may actually go back to the C, um, the C minor pentatonic and add the blues note to that. Okay. Oh, good. Dennis is fine. Okay. Um, so we may go back to the we may have the C minor pentatonic with the blues note because maybe I can justify that E flat a little better if I have the G flat in there. I don't know. We'll see. I'm gonna experiment with it uh, before before Monday, so we'll know. DMAC, Scottish, indeed. God bless you all. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll, I'll see you on Monday, Lord willing, okay? Bye-bye. <laughs>